For centuries, singers and singing teachers alike have known how crucial good airflow is for good singing. Since the advent of singing pedagogy, way back in the 15th and 16th centuries, there have been some breath management methods that have come in and out of fashion. One of the more prominent modern day methods is known as appoggio. What is appoggio? Does it work for all singers? And perhaps more importantly, will it work for you? I've got the answers to these questions, as well as a breathing exercise coming right up. I hope you'll stick around to learn more. Sound check. Check one, check two. G'day, my name is Dr. Dan and I'm a contemporary singing voice specialist. Welcome to Voice Essentials where everybody sings. Now, I've been teaching voice for over 20 years and when I first started to instruct singers, it soon became apparent to me that breathing was a key aspect of good singing. <laughs> Duh. During my university years, the main breathing method that we were instructed in was a technique called appoggio. And the pedagogue we all turned to as the authoritative voice on the subject was none other than internationally respected classical singing teacher Richard Miller. Miller, in his widely acclaimed book The Structure of Singing, states that appoggio cannot narrowly be defined as breath support as is sometimes thought because appoggio includes resonance factors as well as breath management. Here Miller is noting the inescapable connection between breath and resonance. The scope of this video doesn't allow us to fully explore the re relationship between the two but it is worth noting that all four components of the voice, the breath, also called the actuator, the vocal folds, sometimes called the vibrator, the resonators and the articulators all interact with one another as a non-linear system. Every singer aims to develop a coordinated system that is harmoniously working to produce free flowing sound. So back to appoggio because I want to answer Jubner's question, what is appoggio? Well, put simply, appoggio is the combining of thoracic and abdominal breathing. Scott McCoy explains that this is often referred to as balanced breathing or th through the Italian term appoggio from the verb appoggiare which means to lean on. You see, when left to their own natural inclinations, most bodies have a tendency to breathe high, invoking an action called clavicular breathing. Now, if all you want to do is ex exist on the planet and exchange carbon dioxide for oxygen, then clavicular breathing will suffice. But the moment you need to control how that transfer takes place, the rate at which it happens, as well as the management of pressure both below and above the vocal folds, the high orientation of clavicular breathing is found wanting. So if most people naturally have a tendency to breathe high, it stands to reason that some training might be necessary. Ingo Titzer, in his book Principles of Voice Production, writes, In the inspiratory phase, abdominal muscles need to be trained to relax quickly and completely to allow maximum downward movement of the diaphragm. Titzer goes on to explain that learning to manage the outflow of air is important also, stating another problem is the management of excess subglottal pressure in the early stages of expiration, especially if the phrase to be sung is long. I've observed that most beginner singers tend to not only breathe high, they also tend to use the larynx in a valve-like fashion, which in turn creates tremendous amounts of pressure directly beneath the vocal folds. Learning to manage both the inflow and outflow of air assists significantly with tone, dynamics, pitch and stamina. But not everyone believes that a podjo is the way to go. Now recently a new kid on the block called Accent Breath Method has been advocating for change. Actually, it's not all that new, having been developed in the 1930s by a Danish speech therapist, Professor Sven Smith. Now, Lita Skurs explains that this approach has a heavy emphasis on breath support and targets modal voice, TA dominant register. The patient, well, in this case the singer, is taught to use rhythmic abdominal contractions to produce accents as fricatives and closed vowels. So, which method is best, appoggio or accent? Now, I know that here in my hometown of Brisbane, Australia, appoggio in some circles is a dirty word, with accent method being taught to student teachers with the fervour of a religious cult. 
And I get it because Appoggio has its shortcomings. But does this mean we should throw the proverbial baby out with the bathwater? Personally, I don't think so. In my teaching experience, I have observed the benefits of both, which is why I have both Appoggio and accent method type breathing activities in my exercise collections, Dr. Dan's Voice Essentials 1 and 2. Now to be clear, I am not a certified teacher of accent method, but the exercise we will do together in a moment from Voice Essentials 2 employs the technical ideals of accent. But before we get practical, allow me to note one critical point. The latest research tells us that everybody breathes differently. LeBorn and Rosenberg write, Generally speaking, endomorph body types tend to be abdominally based in their patterns and ectomorph body types tend to be rib cage based. The endomorph body type is bigger, broader and tends to carry more body fat whereas the ectomorph body type is generally leaner with less muscle mass. So, if you're a larger person, you're more likely to feel movement around your tummy when you breathe, making it easier to manage the breath abdominally, whereas if you're on the skinnier side of things, you're more likely to feel activity through the expansion of the ribs. So what does this all mean? Well, Scott McCoy sums it all up very nicely, noting that regardless of the specific method used, the goal of breath support in singing is to provide a stable supply of air at the correct pressure for the desired pitch and loudness. I guess what I'm saying here is many roads lead to Rome. Let's now tread one of those pathways using Exercise 20 from Voice Essentials 2. This activity uses sibilant fricatives to exercise the abdominal wall in an agile manner. Let's do the activity together. You'll notice that we are using the sounds of sh, zh, zh, and s. These sounds place the pressure in the mouth but articulate the movement of the air from the abdominal wall, ultimately training the larynx to remain free from tension. I recommend doing these activities after you've done the Appoggio exercises found in Voice Essentials 1 because the Appoggio activities help to build better management of breath pressure, enabling more consistent breath stream. You can download both Voice Essentials 1 and 2 via the links below if you want to do further work in this area. And if you'd like to learn more about how your voice works, then click on this video here. It'll help you to understand a little more about the non-linear production of sound we discussed earlier in the video. I'll see you again soon. I'm Dr. Dan. Sing well.